Welcome, I'm Raul, and today we're chatting with Cindy. Again. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> welcome, and uh, so we'll go ahead and just get into the subject. Uh, we, uh, you had actually, like, you were on a different podcast, and this topic came up, so uh, you wanted to kind of uh, share it here. You want to kind of talk it out here, right? Yeah. Uh, first of all, plugging them, it's, I don't know which order it's in, but it's like Black Girl, White Gee, or White Gee, Black Girl, BJJ, but that's their podcast. Um, but the topic came up of rolling with the opposite gender, because uh, jiu-jitsu and grappling is such an intimate sport. Gender, size, strength, skill level might come into play, but rolling with the opposite gender, there's different body parts, there's different things going on it might be uncomfortable so i was wondering like if you've had any interesting situations where you've had to if you rolled with the opposite gender any issues that come up or any feelings that come up uh personally for me not not really the, the, but um i think it is important for an athlete just to uh like you, like you're gonna have to roll with anybody right especially to like say, say if there's only a woman there and you got to be drilling you know you, you have to partner with that person so I personally don't have a problem with it I guess people have had um, issues maybe at different gyms and stuff but fortunately uh, say like here at UCLA I, uh, nothing's happened in any of my classes uh, and even you know when I teach at different studios around LA uh, nothing's happened so it so seems like like uh, I think people see the necessity and I guess as long as everyone's like trying to learn whatever art we're going over uh, then there's usually or there hasn't been a problem and I, I think there really shouldn't be a problem if you're seriously trying to learn whatever it is we're, we're teaching yeah I think it shouldn't be in the way either but even if you are rolling with the opposite gender I think there are some things that you have to take into consideration like strength and size and skill level but that's even like regardless of gender right mm -hmm. like and I remember I posted this video up, like it was a couple months ago now, but it got so much hate because I was talking about how I was rolling with the guy and I don't think he knew proper technique, but I was in his guard, right? And he was trying to pull a triangle on me. And, and if, so for people who don't know, for an effective triangle, the arm trap needs to be pulled across, right? Mm -hmm. But in that case, he didn't have my armor crossed, so I was just fully exposed to his groin. And when he pushed my, pulled my head down to finish the choke, my face just like, into his groin and that made me uncomfortable but i don't think he like maliciously meant it and everyone just hated me in the comments like you are just sensitive keep that sensitive crap out of the gym um you you're trying to say that people shouldn't do triangles and i'm like they completely missed the point mm -hmm. like i think it was just a matter of imbalance of skill level mm -hmm. but yeah have you i think when you're rolling with someone of the opposite gender do you have to consider like your own strength and skill. I feel like we've re reversed the roles a little bit where I'm asking you the questions. <laughs> yeah, sure. no, no problem. No problem. Have, do you, what do you consider when you're rolling with the opposite gender? Yeah, um, well, you, like primarily the skill level. So, so I don't see gender. And <laughs> <laughs> I don't see color, I don't see gender. No, okay, no, but um, uh, I think mostly what I consider is the skill level. So most of the time when I'm rolling with someone, they're not as highly skilled as I am. So, uh, you know, I. Sometimes I'll, I'll be very deliberate as to what my movements are going to be so they can kind of actually like see what, what I'm doing so they can like counter or resist or whatever. Um, so that's, that's mostly what, I mean, like I wish I could uh, have more to say about, about that, but, yeah, cause, but I think, yeah, it's probably the main thing I take into consideration. Like if, or even if it's someone I don't know, whether it be, because uh, I don't underestimate any training partner because they're you know, like you know we train at uh, 10th planet headquarters uh, you know we have uh, some women who are actually like very strong and and um, their skill is getting better right so I don't underestimate anyone but mm -hmm. then like say if we start rolling I, I don't know their skill level and if I can quickly assess that oh I don't think they're that great or I can totally just like dominate them real quick then um, uh, yeah maybe I won't like smash them like the uh, like wrestling, like I don't put all the like grinding uh, force into them, uh, but I think I wouldn't do that with with anyone in general, especially sparring. It, you kind of want to save that for 
uh, the actual like jujitsu tournament or the wrestling tournament. So I usually just, uh, I guess, I think I have a perspective about training partners where it's like, I'm not gonna go like all out. And uh, if I notice that your skill level is like, like very low, then I'll even relax even more. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I think maybe people should be thinking of it that way maybe where, because uh, I, I don't believe that um, like, the, like gender should be separated. I think everyone should be, you know, training with each other. Yeah. I've had people like, like you said, like they shouldn't be separated, but I've had people like avoid the opposite gender just because they're afraid, which is like totally valid. I personally minimize or like roll with only the opposite gender of people who I trust. Mm-hmm. Because I've had instances where people like spaz out or try too hard. They're trying to point a point that they're stronger than me or they almost injure me because they're... And it might not even be a gender thing. It might just be people who... I'd roll like that. But I've found that to be most cases with men. Um, because I think women are a little bit more... What's the word? I don't want to say acclimated. But like they're more um, considerate of like size and skill so i'm a little more considerate or cautious of the men i roll with do you ever feel like you have to be or have you ever felt like unsafe with a woman because i've had like people say like like a man say he felt unsafe with a woman because she was sexualizing the situation Mm -hmm. while they were rolling which isn't acceptable by any means so have you ever felt that way um yeah, no, 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 really. Um, so luckily, right? Yeah. Uh, but I remember yeah, you did, like, there was one guy, right, that um, I, I think I told you, like, not to roll them because like, yeah. you identified that this guy actually is, like, he can, in- he injures people, right? So, yeah, once you kind of identify that, hopefully you can identify someone who's uh, a little too aggro before you get injured. But, um, um, yeah, once you, once you make that identification, you can avoid them. But uh, fortunately, yeah, I haven't been in that kind of situation that you mentioned where uh, a woman was sexualizing anything. Or even men, either, looked out, I think. Yeah, maybe because I'm the instructor most of the time. So uh, a lot of times the instructor has to set the, the, like the standard or the example, right? So that, that is a responsibility of the instructor. So if they see any uh, people like, I don't say misbehaving, but behaving not according to the standards, then you kind of have to get on top of that, like if you're the instructor, I think. Yeah, I think also as an instructor, it's important to set boundaries, Mm -hmm. or like to set the example of boundaries, like what you're okay with, what you're not okay with. Yeah. But also pairing up people that you think are appropriate. Yes, yes. So like, what are your bound? do you have any at all, like, or if any boundaries that you set while rolling? Yeah, um, well, I think sometimes, like, uh, going back to even some of the classes we've had in the past, when you're um, already my uh, my assistant, is that uh, we've had, like, some men, right? They, it's funny, because, yeah, the problem sometimes, or often, are, have to do with men, where they're, like, the, it's talking, but not necessarily, like, just talking because they're communicating, but they're mansplaining, right? So especially... If it's like a man to a woman, then they're like, "You got to do it this way," or whatever. And like, like, uh, and I, I know that people try to do it with you. So it's like, if I if I see stuff like that, you know, I try my best to get on top of it where it gets minimized. Or like, then the instructor can then be like, "Okay, so I'm gonna need you to partner up with someone else," and, you know, that, that where it wouldn't happen, All right? But then uh, if it's like a continued problem or like a uh, like still bad enough, then yeah, you totally have to make it very clear to that person like we're not going to accept you know whatever because yeah whatever it is did you have any questions that you wanted to ask um no no but i I think that that maybe it might go down to that where it's like say maybe if the like no instructor has to be like crazy like uh micromanaging anything but there's easy ways to kind of set that um that was like that welcoming environment, but then also an environment where everyone's respected and they feel safe. And uh, because I ultimately believe that, say, like fighting or martial arts, 
can be done by anyone or like even be above that it's like um anybody can win a fight right so yeah. this is like gender is not even the factor it is usually like the the skill level the training the the intelligence right the mindset and stuff because like a lot of times like yeah like you can outsmart the other person and you can lure them into some kind of uh, trap where you can say in sanda you can knock them out or catch wrestling pin them or submit them so i've never uh, felt like uh, uh, like the strength was that big of a i mean it is a deal but it isn't like the yeah big thing so um i i guess my dream would be like where everyone feels comfortable where it's like i want to learn World something peace. Yeah, yeah yeah so we're gonna have a quick meditation session no but but i think that that's the thing where it's like if everyone kind of understands like we're here to learn an art or a skill or whatever and uh why don't we just focus on that instead of you know or kind of try to get beyond whatever your um your hang-ups are or whatever is like um yeah we put like the goal at the the forefront of your mind not i guess like how someone looks or whatever yeah, I think that's the most important thing, especially when finding a gym, is like finding people that are like-minded like you, mm -hmm. that are aimed towards one goal. But also, when you're rolling or at the gym, is finding people that respect your no's. No is a complete sentence, is what I fully wholeheartedly believe. You don't need to explain yourself, so like if someone asks you to roll and you say no, you shouldn't have to explain yourself. Mm -hmm. That's it, yeah. period. Yeah. But usually, I, I'm usually nice, and I'm like, no, I'm taking this rest round. But if they, I luckily, I've never had anyone push it. Mm. But have you ever had to say no to someone, like because you felt uncomfortable, because you, well, like if they asked you to roll and you've ever had to say no because you were uncomfortable? I think maybe I make people uncomfortable. <laughs> I make them uncomfortable. <laughs> it's, like, it's like they avoid my eye contact when it's time to <laughs> pair up for sparring. Yeah, how does <laughs> that make you feel? Uh, other, other way around, like, has anyone said no to you? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, actually, you know, when we were training <laughs> at a, one of the gyms we went to, it's like, uh, um, you know, say, like, if you take down some of their best people and submit them, then... They start avoiding you, and then all of a sudden, it felt like the whole gym was like not wanting to roll with me. But I don't think, especially since you were there, you were yeah. like, you, you didn't like. I wasn't like hurting. I wasn't really hurting people. I wasn't like being all mean or anything, right? It's just I think that maybe they their egos were bruised a little, yeah. so then they were avoiding me. So, um, because they would still be nice to us or whatnot, but like, like it was when it was on the mat, they would just be like. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just avert their eyes. Yeah, so I think that's that's the no I get where they're yeah. just like like the bell ring. You, you look around for someone else to roll with, and then yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of the the no I get, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, that should be respect. I respect that no too. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. <laughs> so then yeah, then it's like you and me drilling again, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, you're right about the whole idea where it's like okay, you totally have to find like the whole like-minded uh, uh, group of people and I, I don't think it's, it, gender should be any factor in it. It's just like people who their goal is to get better at grappling or kickboxing, whatever, then you guys get together and train. And I think maybe gender can be a thing where like you just got to be considerate of other people's body parts because I think... This just happened earlier, I was telling him about it earlier, where we were practicing, uh, this is a beginner jujitsu class, so we were learning how to seatbelt, but this one guy was like, had his seatbelt over me, and he was just like, should I put my arm on top or under your boob, like verbatim, and I was just like, speechless, because I've never had someone be so, I don't want to say vulgar, <laughs> but so straightforward with me, and like, mm. physically do it to me, so and I, was, I just took his arm, and I was like, right here is just fine. So, yeah. you know, just being considering <laughs> Sometimes yeah. you gotta <laughs> read the room a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Or understand the technique, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Because, like, you're trying to choke, so the goal is to have your arms... As close right. to the neck of the yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Did you have any questions for me? Um, so, yeah, I mean, well, what you just asked me, I mean, I think we can ask you back, right? Is it, But it, I think you've kind of... We both kind of talked about your questions where... Um, uh, has there, besides like what you just mentioned right now, I mean, is there some other, uh, well, you also mentioned the whole 
triangle choke situation? Was oh, there any yeah. other situation that where you felt uncomfortable? No, or? not uncomfortable. I've never been, thankfully, just because I think the gyms I've been to have been very respectful. Mm-hmm. Um, the only guy that I can think of that I could have been uncomfortable with was the guy that you mentioned, the guy that you told me to avoid. Mm-hmm. So that's the only guy I've ever avoided. But like outside of the mat, he's been nice to me. He's asked me to roll, but I've just been like, no, I'm just taking a rest round. And thankfully he's respected that too. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I guess maybe we can kind of talk about like, th- so I think ultimately we've been lucky, uh, but maybe there's other people around the country or in other countries that um, might, uh, like there might not be as many gyms around. Like we have, like in, in LA, it's like there's a jiu-jitsu a gym. Like, yeah, yeah. So I mean, is there is there something that you might like be on the lookout for, where it's like if you like that are like red flags or anything? How they roll with other people? Like I'm not gonna invite the guy to roll with me if I see him and another guy going at it, like rolling around the gym and trying to kill each other. I'm not gonna invite that guy. And I also just generally look for people my size and I, I let them know about what I'm okay with or not okay with before the round. Like I'm not okay with, um, like if I'm feeling injured that day, like uh, no leg locks for me today or like I'm still fairly new so can we take it easy today or I'm tired, can we take it easy today? Stuff like that. I make sure to communicate my boundaries or how I'm feeling beforehand but I generally look at how they just roll with other people first. I like to observe and then I'll determine if they're trustworthy enough to roll with me. Yeah. yeah, I think maybe on top of that, then I might want to add where it's like, you go, like I say, for someone going to a new gym, like uh, they want to, or you should like see how the instructor's behaving too, right? Like maybe they're making like inappropriate jokes or whatever, then. Uh, that's usually like a red flag. Um, also, to the way they treat the students, because like it's kind of like the way they treat the students. Then the students feel like it's okay to treat each other that way. Um, yeah. Do you think there's any other red flag you want to highlight? Not, not much. I don't think this was a gender thing, or maybe it was, <laughs> or maybe it was. But I remember when I was still hopping around gyms in San Jose. There was this one gym. I'm not gonna dox them, but. I was, it was my first time in the gym, and this one was a very, very, I don't say traditional gym, but they have like very strict rules. So they're like, bow into the mat. You have to wait on the side until the, the instructor calls you in if you're late. You have to wear this rash guard, you have to wear these pants, you have to wear this colored gi. And one time I was stepping off the mat because it was like a water break or something, and my sandals were a little far away because everyone else's sandals were there. And I had to take like one step off the mat onto the ground to get to my sandals. And this one guy just started going off on me. Like, like, hey, can you put on your, can you not touch the ground with your bare feet? And he just looked at me all dumb. And I was like, I'm sorry, this is my first time. And he just like, stupid. And I was mm. like, I started, <laughs> I shouldn't have done this, but I started crying. And the instructor came up to me and was like, is everything okay? But, and he talked to me afterwards which is fine, and he handled it, but the fact that his student felt comfortable enough to talk to me like that isn't okay, and I found out like that gym just isn't for me based on the environment and the students and the rules set. But I think like that would be a red flag too, like just the yeah. way you treat other people. Yeah. You could like be polite and be like, hey, it's one of our common rules to like not step on the mat, can you just do that next time? Or some other way, but if you're gonna treat your classmates as like an asshole then i don't want to roll with you or like the, i don't want to be in this gym period yeah yeah that's like a way too strong of a like attack right because it's like even here like we're, we're on a we're on a mat right now and uh uh like if students who are new to martial arts they come in sometimes they'll feel free to start walking onto the mat with their shoes on and but yeah, no one ever is like, <laughs> you know, it's usually yeah. like, hey, you know, no shoes on the mat, please. Or, you know, we, we pretty much try to stop it right at the beginning and then just say, it. like, no, just, you know, and, we, and we, we provide, like, cubbies. Uh, behind the camera, there are a bunch of cubbies and all, you know, <laughs> all this space for people to put their stuff. So it's like, we try to make it where it's like, uh, we facilitate what we want, right? Yeah. So if the gym and the coach isn't doing stuff like that, then 
yeah, it could be like a, a gym you might not want to be in, or like a red flag stuff that you can uh, kind of like point to and and you know, because like if you kind of ignored like too many, if you if there's more than one red flag and you start trying to like ignore some of these things, then later on, you know, like it might just be too much and you might leave the gym anyway. When whereas you could, if you see some red flags right at the beginning and you find another gym then and there, like you might be you might find the gym that you're happy at. Yeah. Earlier, right? Cause I, I did have that situation where um, I was at a gym for a while that a um, bunch of red flags, and then uh, you know we, I even took you with me to hop around to see different gyms, and so now we're happy at uh, 10th Planet headquarters because there's a lot of really great instructors there, so uh, and a lot of people do set up their um, uh, their gyms like very respect or like their classes very respectfully and stuff, so. Yeah, it's pretty good overall. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, but we can't, like, so, I think with that being said, so even though 10th Planet is, like, a, a chain or there's, like, a franchise or whatever, uh, we can only talk about that one uh, location because I know that, you know, peop- they're, they're all run by different people, right? So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Not that we've had bad experiences with other 10th Planets, but we've had interesting experiences. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, is there any uh, other thing you can identify? Or did we kind of talk about at least all the ones you could think of right now? Yeah, that's everything I could think of right now. Oh, awesome, awesome. So, uh, would would you ultimately feel? Because I think ultimately, with say women in like grappling sports, that so we have like, um, I think now they're saying what, women's wrestling in high school and college is like the fastest growing sport. So women are having more women to roll with and to train with but it's that's not exactly so widespread so with that being said like um do you feel like as a woman like say if you were to yeah move to some other city and uh do you feel like like if there's no other you go to the gym no other woman there like you would still train though or what? i'd still train i'd i'd identify who's my size at least mm-hmm. because i think as a smaller man, they would know how it feels to be smashed mm. by another big man. Yeah. So they would probably be the most um, susceptible to my, or um, sympathetic to my feelings of being a smaller woman. So yeah, I mean, I've rolled with big dogs before, but <laughs> like back at home in 10th Planet San Jose, there was like this 200 pound man and I felt comfortable rolling with him because every time I've rolled with him, I've never been injured. We just have like a playful round where he's just like throwing me around. But it's fine because I trusted him. Mm. So, you know, it's just identifying who I trust and rolling with them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think that's uh, the ultimate thing where it's, yeah, finding people you can trust and um, yeah, and they can even be bigger, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, very good point. So, yeah, yeah. So it's, it, it's unfortunate where it's like you can't just walk in anywhere. Like, if you want to start learning wrestling or whatever you can't just walk in anywhere uh, and be okay but yeah i guess it's a little bit on the individual to you know, see if well at least if you're in a city like la you can you can try so many studios but um yeah so i guess you kind of have to do your homework a little yeah yeah all right okay with that being said maybe um is there anything else to add um no okay maybe we'll call it here and yeah. so if you have any questions you the listener the viewer uh that you'd like us to talk about feel free to to write a comment or whatever if you don't like this just don't comment <laughs> because we don't want to hear it we're just going to continue doing what we want we're not going to hear it yeah yeah okay but yeah if, if there's anything you want us to talk about anything positive then we'll do it So feel free to write it in the comments and we'll see you next time.